Let's stand and let's worship together. Let's sing. He's worthy of our praise today. He deserves it. Hallelujah. Your love never gives up, never runs out on me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And now we are ready to break the chain. Break every chain. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hey, if you got a couple seats beside you, raise your hand real quick. Right, we got a couple seats right up front there. There you go. Good. Hallelujah.
Let's praise him. He's worthy. We worship your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Tell you what, we have a special, special day here at Promised Land. We have two people receiving graduation certificates. We've actually had four people that have graduated, and two will be next week as well. So uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful accomplishment uh, to see somebody uh, come enter into this program and and stay the course and Amen. do all the book work and all the memory verses and all the physical work and all the stuff that we do at Promised Land Ministries and change their life to find out who they are in Christ, understand their identity, and totally be transformed. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing to be a part of. So I tell you what, we'll go uh, with youngest first. Uh, our, I don't know, age before beauty or beauty before age? <laughs> be the same thing. <laughs> Tyler, come on up here, would you? Tyler Siri. <laughs> Tyler graduated the pro. Who's got a camera? Who's got the camera? Okay, there we go. I got a camera. Okay. Tyler graduated uh, is while I was gone, but today's date is the December 1st, so that's what's on the, uh, the graduation certificate. Tyler, hold up there. Let's get a picture. More and more and more, yeah. Hey, uh, speech? I'll say a little something. <laughs> well, uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody that's remotely related to this program. This program's definitely turned my life around. I, uh, what it did for me was take the weight of the world off my shoulders, and uh, this program enables, enables you to focus on what you need to be focused on, and that was the Word of God. And the Word of God has empowered me to do everything that I was trying to do on my own. And once I gave it all up, let God handle it, I'm starting to, starting to reap the benefits. I've got my life worked out, done a lot of things now that I'd planned on been doing for years. I've applied to law school. I've gotten a, a good job, gotten a, a new start, and uh, I'm just thankful, so thankful. Amen. Thankful for every single one of y'all. And uh, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Tyler. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I'm glad to see y'all are still awake. Yeah. Uh, Jeff. Jeffrey Hall. Come on up here. I felt like a little bit like Price is Right just then. Yeah. Jeffrey Hall, the Price is Right. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get a picture. Jeff. I just have, w I have one thing to give you, an attaboy. All right, yeah. I, uh, I don't have anything set to say either, uh, so I just, uh, I mean, I, I, I got a wake-up call from Mom this morning, forgot totally everything about waking up. Uh, made it down here real quick, but I guess mine will be mainly towards the guys that are here. It's to uh, get every single thing you can out of this while you're here. Uh, open up, be willing. And uh, I've gotten something from every single person in here. Even the bump in the head sometimes, you grow. And it's letting go of your will and doing his. And uh, I love this place. I love Glenn. I love every single one of you. So that's all I got. We love you too, brother. Uh, Joe, Ed, come on down. The price is right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, we need to pray for Joe. He can't see, so if he trips over you, it's not just because he's trying to get more money out of you. It's because he can't see, so. <laughs> Memory verse. Proverbs 16, 3 and 20. 
commit your work to the Lord, then your plans will succeed. For those who love instruction, they will prosper. And for those that trust in the Lord, they will find happiness. Praise the Lord. Joe? I'm going to go with the short version of Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Very good. Amen. <laughs> Joe told me yesterday he's going to have to really be able to start seeing or get a really large print Bible because he's running out of memorized verses. <laughs> Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for healing over Joe's eyes. We pray, Lord, that you would just minister sight unto the blind and allow him to be able to read your word again. We pray, Lord, you'll bless this offering. Use it for your purposes. We thank you for these that are here today. We ask, Lord God, that you just have your will and your way in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
sing it to him. He is great. He is worthy of our praise. You are great, Lord. Yes, Jesus, you are great. Give the Lord a hand. You are great, Lord Jesus. You are great.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. You may be seated. Kids class can be released at this time. I have somebody that just doesn't want to leave me right now. Okay. She decided to go to kids class after all. Amen. Christian, turn those lights on so in case anybody wants to read their Bible, they can read with us. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I'm glad to be back. Amen. Amen. I, I've heard that there's several people glad that I'm back. So. I'm, I, I'm, I'm really glad to be back. I tell you what, I really do miss my family in Indonesia. They are so wonderful. They are so sweet. In fact, one of my brothers, I call him my brother, he's actually my brother-in-law, he was so kind to us. When we showed up at his house, him and his wife and child packed up and moved out so we could have his home, and they stayed with their in-laws, and we had his house the whole time we were there in his town. And I tell you what, I mean, it's just wonderful, you know, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time we had. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting things. Um, I was in this hotel, and there's this green arrow on the ceiling pointed towards the bathroom wall. I had seen this arrow before in another hotel and really hadn't paid no attention to it. So I finally asked my wife, I was like, um, I know that's not an emergency exit sign because it's pointing to a wall, not the door. So what is that? So she proceeded to tell me what it was, and I don't remember the name she used, but what is it? Kaaba. Uh, Kaaba. And that is so the, that when the Muslims are in the hotel and they need to pray towards Mecca, they know what direction to pray. And I just began to think that I am so glad I have a God that doesn't matter if I'm facing east, west, north, or south. <laughs> if I'm sitting down, lying down, if I'm in my bed, on my knees, it doesn't matter. He hears me when I call. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I tell you what, I just, ah, I, a lot of things, but I'm not going to try to share everything with you today. Uh, I have a uh, message I want to share with you, and I tell you what, I'm fired up about this. Man, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to, to, to get to this message. And, and I, this time th that I was gone just really kind of renewed to me what my calling is, what God has in store for, for me, for this church, and for anybody that's involved in this church. And so for that means most of you guys that are still going to continue to be a part of this church, it's for you. This message is for you. It's for me. It's for you. And one of the things the Lord kind of revealed to me is to, that I have really got to, as the pastor of this ministry, get back to the basics of what my calling is. And my calling as a pastor is to equip the body for ministry. Amen? That's, that's my calling. That's my duty as a pastor is to equip you. It's not to make you feel good about yourself, although that may be part of it. It's not to make you be happy about, you know, everything that's going on. It's to equip you for the work. So I just want to go ahead and share with you that if you came today just to hear a good word, I'm sure you hear a good word because God is wonderful and there's nothing bad in his word. So I know you hear a good word today. And if you're just here for the show, well, you know, it might be a good show. It might not be a good show. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. But one way or the other, if you came to be a part of this church, then you've got to understand there's going to be an expectation, an expectation of you being involved in this ministry, in God's ministry, in working for him. So if you're not along for the ride and you actually want to be a member of this church, you actually want to be part of this, plan on getting your hands dirty because ministry is dirty work. Amen? Oh, I got three people on my side. Wow. Who I'm ready to preach now. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, you know what, though? 
And we, we're building that new church over there by the high school. So don't get me wrong. I mean, we, we put a lot of time and energy and effort into this building to equip it uh, to be able to, to reach people uh, in a very unconventional manner. So don't, don't think that, you know, I, I'm against having lights and uh, having excitement and having a good time or having weird things in your, what are you doing, taking a picture of me in a jacket? It's the first time ever. So don't, I mean, I'm not against it, uh, and we will have these things, but when you get beyond just the, the, the surface, when you get beyond just understanding that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords, and he becomes your king and your Lord, you need to get ready to do some work, amen? Yeah. We need to get ready to be equipped to work for ministry, and that's what my calling is, and that's what I'm going to uh, do my best to try to do for this body. And so today, this first message back, today, this first Sunday after Thanksgiving, today I, I, I want to equip the body with a message on having an attitude of gratitude. Do you think we could benefit from that? Yeah. Man, we need to learn how to praise God yeah. no matter what's going on. When my sister stepped up this morning and she said, my granddaughter died yesterday and this might come across the wrong way to people, but I praise God for his hand that those kids were not in the car. My sister has begun to learn what it means to praise God in the good and in the bad. That's where we've got to get. We have got to learn to be able to have an attitude of gratitude, to be able to give thanksgiving, to be able to praise him because he's worthy. Not because things are going right in our life, not because we have money in our pocket, not because everything just went well this morning when I tried to jump off the car and rip the door off the engine. But praise God. You would think that somebody my age can learn how to jump off a car without ripping the door off the hinge. Praise God. <laughs> we managed to get here anyways. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thanksgiving. Man, everybody said, what did you do for Thanksgiving? I was on a plane for Thanksgiving. I was in the airport. And I was on a plane, and I was in another airport, and I was on a plane, and I was on a plane, and I was in an airport. What I had for Thanksgiving meal really wasn't that bad, but it was airline food. Yeah. yeah. Emirates isn't too shabby, so, I mean, they're kind of nice. But, you know, it, we were on a plane for Thanksgiving. But it amazes me. It really does. And please don't take this the wrong way. Because I know I have a lot of folks in here that got up early Friday morning to go do some shopping. So don't take this the wrong way. But it amazes me that 313.9 million people, that's the population of the United States of America, can take one day and set it aside and spend that day giving thanks or watching football games and eating turkey, but one or the other. And the very next morning after spending a whole day that's supposed to be a day of thanksgiving, a day of praise, get up early and trample each other at, at the stores to buy stuff they don't need. Amen. I mean, think about it. There's people that got trampled over a television that the person that probably trampled them for had five or six of them at the house already. We got to get our priorities straight. We got to get our priorities straight. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. We need to show real appreciation. How many of us actually on Thanksgiving Day took time to thank God for what he's done in our lives? Amen. A few of us in here. Praise God. That's why y'all in church. <laughs> thank God for what he's done, for what he's doing. I have an amazing God. He is able to meet our needs. He is so amazing. He has begun 
working on meeting my needs long before I ever even knew I had them. He'll take a little bit of finances and stretch it over the course of a vacation and still hopefully have enough to pay that deductible <laughs> on that car <laughs> that I ripped off the door <laughs> on. Y'all think I'm teasing? No, I really did. <laughs> Praise God, right? <laughs> no, my van, yeah. And we need to be different. We need to learn to praise God just as much in the bad times as in the good times. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. We have got to praise God because he's God. Amen. He is worthy. He deserves our thanksgiving. He deserves our praise. If it were not for him, you would not be alive. Amen. If it were not for him sending his son on Calvary's cross, we'd not be forgiven. <laughs> we'd all go straight to hell. So thank him. Thank him. We need to thank him even when it seems like we won't cross the finish line. We need to thank him. Praise him. Give a shout to him this morning. Let me hear you shout out to him. Say, Jesus. Say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. And all the time. Attitude of gratitude. You know, there's something about that. We've heard it most of our lives. You need to have an attitude of gratitude. You need to be thankful for what you got. You need this, you need that. But if we don't learn to build habits that create an attitude of gratitude, we will quickly lose that gratitude the minute something doesn't go right. In fact, there's a lot of people that have this really bad habit of seeing everything that's wrong. Yeah. I mean, everything can be right. Like Ed says, you know, you can cut every blade of grass in the yard. You leave one sprig, they'll call you and say, you didn't cut my grass. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll find the one little thing that's wrong. We don't need to be that type of people, do we? We need to begin to find what's right. Amen? We need to have a habit of having an attitude of gratitude. And it's on building this habit that I want to speak to you on today. I want to teach you. I want to equip you. I want to help you learn how to build a habit of having an attitude of gratitude. And it comes in three simple steps. There is no refund. You know, send $19.99 and plus shipping and handling and you'll get exactly what you need. No, just teasing. Some of y'all don't watch late night TV. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, because this jet lag thing has got my kids messed up. You know what time they got me up this morning? 1.56 this morning. I've been up since 1.56 this morning with two little kids running around screaming, I want to eat, I want to eat, let's eat, let's eat. Say, Go to sleep. What's wrong with you? Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Isaiah 52.1. Turn with me in your Bibles. We have it on the screen if you need it. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Now, there's a few key words there I want to point out to you. The first step of having an attitude of gratitude is alertness. Awake. Awake. It's funny, Jeff said he forgot to wake up. I got to tell you something this morning. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Awake, awake. Arise, wake up. He says it twice. You know why he says it twice? Because most of us like to hit the snooze button and go home back to sleep for another nine minutes, right? I don't know why it's nine minutes, but it's nine minutes on the snooze button, right? 
Awake. And in case you hit the snooze button, awake. Get awake. Wake up. And if you have any trouble, I'll send Raina and Dylan over to your house, and they'll wake you up at 1 o'clock in the morning for you, okay? (laughs) In order for me to equip you, in order for you to receive a habit of an attitude of gratitude, the first step is you got to wake up. You got to wake up. You got to come out of that slumber. You got to come out of that sleep. You have got to wake up and see what God is doing. Amen? Amen. You got to stop going through life with the spiritual blinders on, and you've got to wake up. (laughs) When we first got to Indonesia, we had jet lag. I tell you what, if nobody's ever been to a whole different time zone and been on an airplane for two solid days, you don't know what I'm talking about. But after being on an airplane for two solid days and getting a whole different time zone and everything, tired. But there's so many things to experience. So we're trying to be wide awake and watch, but few of the kids fall asleep in the back of the car. And You know what they did when they fell asleep? They missed it. They missed what everybody else that was awake saw. They missed what was happening. They missed seeing five people on one motorcycle. (laughs) They finally did before it was over with. And we think we might have seen six, but we're not absolutely certain. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I can testify in a court of law, I have seen five people on one motorcycle. It is a family vehicle. It is. In the front was a small child about three years old, the father, another child, the mother, and then a baby in the arms. And she could have been breastfeeding, but I'm not certain. Hey, if you go on my Facebook page, you'll see like a whole living room set on one motorcycle, okay? You can use a motorcycle to carry a refrigerator over there. I don't know how they did it, but the refrigerator was delivered, yeah, with the motorcycle. They missed it because they were asleep. I've got to ask you something. Are you missing what God is doing in your life because you're asleep? He is out there. He is working. He has been, from the foundations of this earth, he has been preparing a way for you to find victory, to get a breakthrough, to have what you need to be successful in this life and for the one to come, but you've missed it because you're sound asleep cutting logs. Thank you for the sound effects, Art. Appreciate that. (laughs) Next time I'll mic you. Did I add to the show? Thank you. Okay. Now, some of us kind of wake up a little groggy, don't we? You know, we don't need just a cup of coffee. We need like three pots of coffee. And then (laughs) after about three pots of coffee, the eyelids begin to slowly open. And about five hours after we're supposed to be awake and working already, we actually can see something. Yeah. Uh, And we call it grogginess, right? You got the sleep in your eyes. That's a nice word for boogers, right? You know, you got them things in your eyes, and you got to get them out, and you, you can't see, and you're rubbing your eyes. It takes you a while to get going. Some of us wake up a little groggy. A- in fact, when I was on the plane, it was about to deliver dinner, lunch, breakfast. Who even knows what it was, you know? But they were delivering something, and I was supposed to pick a choice, and my wife handed me the menu, and I'd fallen asleep, and I didn't think I had, but she had a picture of me with my mouth wide open and everything, so... <laughs> I guess I did, and uh, to prove that I did, you know. And so she handed me the menu. She said, what are you going to pick? And I honestly could not read the thing. I mean, I, my eyes were so out of focus and everything. I said, I can't read it. I can't see it, you know. I had to turn the light on, rub my eyes, and ah, get the boogers out and all that other stuff. And finally, I was able to read what the menu was. And I don't know. I forgot what I chose, but it's not important. A lot of us are awake, but we're groggy. And we've accepted Christ as our Savior. But we hadn't 
got the sleep out of our eyes. We haven't really woke up yet. We need that second awake. Not only do we need to be awake, we need to be awake. We need to be alert. We need to be ready. Amen? Yeah. And because we're groggy, we're kind of going through life and the motions. We're doing the things that we have to do when we're told or when somebody's watching. But we're just going through the motions. We're not receiving the full reward of what God has in store. We need to wake up. We need to rise. We need to wake up. We need to understand that God is doing something. We need to get the sleep out of our eyes and wake up to the reality that God is alive and well. And he loves us. He cherishes us and he's got something in store for us we need to stop settling for second best or whatever we can grab a hold of and really wake up enough to make a decision to find out what's really good on that menu amen Amen. you might be stuck with something you don't like because you're groggy (laughs) now it's important that you understand a little something about isaiah here okay Isaiah is prophesying to a people that are going to be taken captive in about 150 years. And he's prophesying about them being delivered from that captivity. And, and that's what he's talking about. Put on your beautiful garments, so Zion, this, that, and that. He's telling them, wake up, wake up again. He's, he's giving them, it's kind of conversational. See, the people, they, they spoke first and they cried out to God. And that's in Isaiah 51. And we'll turn over there in just a second. And this is God's reply. God's reply is, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. And if you'll kind of look over at 51.9 real quick. This is the people crying out to God. They say, they're talking to God. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of of the Lord awake as in the ancient days in the generations of old thou not thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon and what they're saying is look wake up God they're crying out wake up God wake up wake up do what you used to do deliver us work the mighty works that you used to work verse 2 tells us Isaiah 51 I mean not to uh, 10 tells us Yeah, art thou not which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea and the way of the ransom to pass over? Didn't you split the Red Sea that we could walk across on dry ground? Lord, we want you to do something. And I have a feeling that in this room, there's many people here this morning that are crying out, Lord, we want you to do something. Do something like you used to do. We want to see a miracle. We want to see your hand. We want to walk across on dry land. We want deliverance. We want a breakthrough. We want healing. We want victory. And God in turn is telling you in Isaiah 52 verse 1, no, you wake up. You wake up because I am the same God. I am the same God that delivered you. I am the same God that saved you. I am the same God that took you across on dry ground. I am the same God that sends manna to you every single day that you can have what you need. You wake up. You wake up and get the sleep out your eyes and see what I'm doing. God is good, isn't he? God is amazing. You see, what we need to do when we wake up is get that spiritual sensor turned on. Yeah. Y'all ever use a CB radio? I know here more color we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to get that squelch just right so you can get it, so you can tune it in, right? Maybe y'all some use a metal detector, right? If you don't turn it up just right, you'll just miss everything, right? You know, I mean, you've got to get that sensitivity set just right. The first thing you've got to do is wake up. And when you wake up, you've got to get your sensitivity set right. Because when your sensitivity gets set right, you'll be able to see 
what God is doing. You'll be able to see his hand moving in your life. You'll be able to see what's taking place. There's a scripture in Psalm 30, verse 5, that says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the... When does joy come? In the morning. Does anybody know when it's morning time? When you wake up! One o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. When you wake up, that's when, that's when morning is, when you wake up. Some of y'all work night shift. When morning time started at 11 p.m., you know what I mean? It is when you wake up. When you wake up, the weeping will be over, amen? The weeping may endure for the night, but the joy comes when you wake up. Awake, awake, arise, and see what God is doing. Hey, we recently went through storm stories, didn't we? Y'all remember the storm stories? I know it's like five weeks ago, so you can't hardly remember anything. There was a, the, one, the one story that we had in, in the storm when Jesus was in the boat in Mark 4. You remember that in Mark 4 when he was in the boat and he was sound asleep, right? He was sound asleep, and the waves were crashing over the boat, and the boat was about to break apart, and the disciples were scared. And they go, and I'll just read it to you real quick. I had it marked here somewhere. He says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? We're screaming all the time for Jesus to wake up, but Jesus is telling you to wake up and see who he is. Because when you wake up and you know who he is, that he can calm the storm and make the seas stop, he can do anything in your life. We all the time are talking about how Big our problems are. But we need to start alerting our problems to how big our God is. Amen? Amen. The first step in having a habit of an attitude of gratitude is alertness. You got to wake up. Now, there's this little thing that I have. It's called a habit. And, you know, some habits ain't necessarily that bad. I get up in the morning, and after I get up, Usually, I get dressed. Does anybody ever have that happen after you wake up? Thank God everybody here this morning did. <laughs> yes, thank God. <laughs> get dressed. You wake up and you get dressed. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, those I am, put on that beautiful garments. Did you say that put on? That put on? That means you've got to put it on, right? It's like a garment, you know? I got some threads on this morning. Picked this up in Indonesia. Anybody like it? Thank you. My wife helped me pick it out. Isn't she great? It says, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. After you wake up, you got to get dressed. Now, interesting thing is, if you survey women, and I could do this this morning, they have a whole different way of getting dressed than guys do. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you ask a woman, you know, like, how do you know what you're going to wear tomorrow? They're going to, most women will tell you, well, it depends on what I'm going to be doing. You know, am I going to be in the office? If I'm going to be in the office, I might wear a skirt and a blouse. If I'm going to be there all day long, maybe a loose blouse, you know. If I'm going out hiking, you know, I'm going to put on boots and jeans and this, that, and that. You know, it really matters, you know, what they're doing. And, you know, it really puts some thought and effort into what they're going to be doing to what they wear. And, in fact, sometimes my wife puts so much thought and effort into it, sometimes she just brings extra clothes just to change into it. Because she knows she's going to need some flats after those heels for a while, right? So she has that extra pair of shoes. There's a lot of thought going into it. Now, if you surveyed most of the guys in the room, they would say, what's clean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I picked up and smelled and it didn't stink, that's good enough. What's clean or what's almost clean is good enough. So we don't put a whole lot of thought into that getting dressed. Now, spiritually speaking, that's not a very good idea, right? 
we need to really take a lesson from the ladies on spiritually getting dressed and, and taking time. See, we need, you've heard the term getting dressed for success, right? Yeah. We need to get dressed on purpose, amen? amen. We need to get dressed on purpose. A and there's no way I'm going to have time to finish this today, so I'm going to try to speed it up just a little bit for you, okay? We, we're going to have to dress for success. We're going to have to get dressed on purpose. Uh, we can't do this accidentally. You know why? Because our enemy is like a lion seeking whom he can devour, right? Imagine you wearing a T-bone steak on your back, <laughs> and there's a lion out there. I mean, you don't want to put on the wrong thing, right? You know? I mean, we need to put on the armor of God, right? We need to get dressed. We need to put on our strength. We need to stand in truth and stand in righteousness. We need to stand with our salvation. We need to stand in thanksgiving, amen? We need to be able to praise God. Now, real interesting, that put on. To me, that means we might have a choice. If he's telling us that we need to put on strength and put on our beautiful garments, it means that we must have a choice about what we're wearing. In fact, many of us, we woke up, but we hadn't got dressed properly. Some of us are still trying to squeeze into something that we used to wear 10 years ago and three kids earlier. And it just ain't fitting so good no more. Amen? Yeah, it's just, you know, maybe 10 years ago it looked real good. <laughs> but right now, wow. Yeah. I ain't talking about my wife, y'all. Mm -mm. No. I said I'm not talking about my wife. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Y'all think sarcasm all the time. Look, you know, a real friend will tell you when you don't look good in something. Amen? amen. A real friend will tell you. You know, you put on something, you think, mm, man, I looked good 15 years ago when I was wearing this. I know I got to look good now. And they come out and your muffin top looks like a whole cupcake and, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> or a pound, 15 pound, whatever, you know, and, and they're, they're a real friend to tell you, mm, that don't look so hot, you know what, you know, we might need to go change, okay, let's go change, you know, you know, the best friend we got is the Holy Spirit, yeah. and he's a real friend, he'll let you know if you're wearing the wrong thing, some of us got woke up, and we put on a bad attitude, some of us woke up, and we put on judgmentalism, we put on, we, we put on just anger and resentment and bitterness. And I promise you something, that doesn't look good on a child of God. That does not look good on a child of God. We need to get in our closet and clean it out, amen? Amen. We need to understand that God has got some beautiful garments for us. He has got some tailor-made clothes. He has got some nice spiffy threads that really look good called love and joy and peace and long-suffering and patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control. He's got everything we need, and it is tailor-made and custom-fit, ready for us to put on. And yet we're still trying to wear some of that old stuff. That was supposed to have been gotten rid of. I love my wife. She all the time looking through my closet, talking like, mm, you need to get rid of that. That's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get rid of that one. That one's really ugly. Where did this come from? The 1950s? What is this? <laughs> Clean this closet out. She keeps me up to date. Holy Spirit will do the same for you. The Holy Spirit will do the same for you. Man, we need to clean out our closet. Because I promise you, there's some things that we try to wear that just don't look right. They don't fit no more. And you don't need to go on a diet to get in them because they just don't look right anyways. You are not made to talk like that. You are not made to think like that. When God got a hold of you, he changed you. So it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Be alert. 
It's time to get dressed, put on those beautiful garments that God has made for you and the strength that he has designed for you. And let's go on. Let's read verse two there. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O daughter, O captive daughter of Zion. Third thing you need, and I'm going to finish up right here, is you need to arise. You need to check your altitude. Are you living in the circumstances? Are you a of the circumstances we need to praise God if we're going to be a church that makes a difference if we're going to be a church that reaches out beyond these walls if we're going to be a church that affects this community if we're going to be a church that goes out and grabs hold of lost people that are going straight to hell and shows them what the glory of God can look like in their life if we're going to be that church we need to wake up we need to get dressed we need to check our altitude and make sure that we're flying above the situation and we are right seated at the right hand in heavens with Christ. As the praise team gets ready to come, I'm going to ask you to make some decisions today. As they're getting ready, I want you to think about it. Maybe today you've been asleep and you've heard the alarm go off. Maybe you've already been awake, but you haven't had that fourth pot of coffee yet and you've been a little groggy, but you've heard the second alarm go off. If that's you today, I want you to come forward and I want to pray with you. Maybe you've been wide awake, but you've just been trying to wear some old garments that don't fit no more. Maybe you've had a bad attitude. Maybe you failed to recognize how big your God truly is. If that's you, I want you to be down at this altar today. I want to pray with you. Maybe you've been awake and maybe you've actually put on some of the right clothes and did a little bit of closet cleaning, but you get caught up in the everyday circumstances. And you need to get your altitude in check. If that's you, I want you to come forward. Will you stand with me as we close? Father, we just pray, Lord, that you minister to these in this room. Lord God, that you would draw forth any that may be lost, any that need you, Lord God. And for those that know you, Lord Jesus, but we've been caught up in this world and we've been asleep. We've been asleep at the wheel, Lord God. Let us wake up and let us rise up and let us get dressed with the garments of splendor and seat in the heavenlies with you, Lord God. Will you come? The altar's open.